Welcome to Easy Eats with Chef Eve. My name is Chef Eve DeShane here at the Greener Village's Learning Kitchen. And with me today is my uh, beautiful partner, uh, Shanna DeShane, uh, owner of uh, or co-owner of Big Seb Streets. And she's here with me today to uh, do a, a one-pot meal. So uh, we do a lot of different type of cookings together um, at, the, at home. And uh, I just want to show you our go-to meal that we kind of cook maybe twice a week because it's something quick, easy, and simple because it's just, uh, well, that's exactly what it is. It's quick, it's easy, and it's simple. Mm -hmm. All right, so we're going to be making a uh, one pot. Today is kind of like a beef stroganoff slash hamburger helper. So what you're going to need for that today is a, ground of ground, a pound of ground beef, a uh, handful of onions. That'll probably give you about a cup of onions. Uh, I had a few peppers kicking around the fridge today, so I'm going to use uh, probably about a cup of diced peppers. You're going to need a liter of stock, uh, vegetable, beef, uh, whatever you have in the fridge. If you have water, that works as well. Um, we're going to need a package or a pound of, uh, of, of pasta. Uh, we have some mushrooms. So about 12 ounces of mushrooms. So a pack of mushrooms that you would get at the grocery store. And uh, uh, some, th some uh, sour cream or yogurt or Greek yogurt, something to kind of make everything nice and creamy. We've got our flour for our roux, some seasonings, and some garlic. All right, so we're probably going to get started. Yes. So, <laughs> Shanna, we're going <laughs> to... So, Shanna's going to start cutting the onions. The um, mushrooms. The mushrooms, that's right. And then we're going to put our pot onto a medium-high heat. And uh, there we go. So... I said that we were co-owners of Big Seb Streets. Tell mm -hmm. us a little bit about Big Seb Streets, Shanna. We're an ice cream shop, and we do our homemade uh, ice cream sandwiches with our homemade cookies. And we right now we're using Sussex ice cream. Yeah, we're using Sussex ice cream because, uh, well... Nice and local-ish. Exactly, <laughs> and we don't have the time, or we can't make ice cream as good as them. So no. uh, we definitely um, lean towards that right cool. there. And what else do you have going on, Shanna? What are, what, what are we doing? We've got kind of big plans this summer because we, well, we've, uh, or what have we been doing with Big Sebs? Like we've been working at the Northside Market and making milkshakes and, and our sandwiches and stuff. And in the summertime, we're going to be scooping again, hopefully. Well, that's it. And we, yeah, we, we started this during the, uh, during the pandemic. We were mm -hmm. trying to find something for the kids to do and for us not to go, oops, not to go stir crazy. So, uh, and I said, I used to do this. Wouldn't this be fun? So <laughs> we, we, we kind of did that, and now it's taken off a yeah. mind of our own. How much of this did you want again? Um, I would say about 12 ounces, so probably cut the most of those mushrooms, okay. and then we'll be, uh, we'll be good there. And some underneath are already sliced because yeah, they're I a mishmash it. of... <laughs> So yeah, this is basically, like I said, what we, what we make for the kids and I and Shanna. Minus almost all the ingredients because they don't like onions and they don't like peppers and they don't like mushrooms. But you know what? For the <laughs> they don't like, but they end up eating anyway. So we're just going to add our ground beef to that. Um, you're going to notice that I didn't put any oil in there and that's because it's like a medium ground. So all the fat from that is just going to be able to... Uh, make sure that nothing sticks. So I'm just going to break it up a little bit, just like that, and we're going to get that started, just like that, while I keep on dicing my onions. Mm. There we go. Okay. So yeah, so grocery shopping, Shanna, um, we usually what? We usually shop the flyers. Try to, yes. Try to, and then, because uh, yeah, it's always important. Uh, we're living on on um, basically one and a half incomes until the ice cream <laughs> until the ice cream business starts up again. So, yes. so it's always important to kind of save money where you can. And uh, us being both cooks, um, we take for granted how much knowledge that we do have. And but what we do is we cr we create a meal plan by shopping the flyers. So anything that's on sale that week kind of becomes the meal plan. But there's always our staples, which is this, and it's our go-to. 
that's the easiest thing. Now, ground beef today because we have ground beef, but like I say, ground beef is expensive, so we kind of lean towards ground pork or uh, darker pieces of chicken. Sometimes we don't even put any meat, so it, it becomes like a vegetarian dish. So we'll have beans put into it, or we'll uh, use... Uh, we'll or use just veg. Just veg, absolutely. As long as there's no carrots in it. As long as there's no carrots, because yeah, our, our youngest doesn't like carrots. Doesn't like cooked carrots. Yep. Regular carrots are fine. And that's what it is, is having kids, and it doesn't matter if they come from a family of chefs or not, are super, super picky. So yeah. we, uh, we definitely have our hands Do you want the garlic there. in? Yeah, let's put our garlic in. Do you want to get it? Because I don't want to touch it. You don't want to touch it? I've taken my gloves off. Nice, no problem. <laughs> I don't like the smell. It doesn't like and it does get sticky in your hands. Mm. So there we go. So what we're going to do is we're going to cook our beef and our onions together and just let it go nice and fragrant. Mm, it smells good already. Just like this, it does. Mm -hmm. There we go. So if you want to keep on stirring that. I guess. So yeah, we just make a simple list, shop the flyers, and then uh, once the flyers have been shopped, we kind of uh, buy from there along with our staples like our milk, our eggs, mm -hmm. our butter. Lunch stuff. Lunch stuff for the kids, that's right, because everything is pretty, uh, pretty straightforward. They're not really fancy on lunches. <laughs> so there we go. And again, you can dice and add the peppers as you want. These are nice small peppers. They were on sale this week. I usually don't. And they're also great for lunch. So when we do mm. buy stuff, we look for stuff that's transferable. Our middle guy likes uh, red, raw pepper. red pepper, yellow pepper. And uh, so we buy things that will work well with lunches and that will translate as well. And I think that's it when you're buying stuff is stuff that will have multiple uses. Don't buy foods that are only good for one dish. Mm -hmm. So if you have your ground beef, you can use your ground beef for all kinds of stuff. Uh, your chicken, when we buy a roast chicken, we also look for stuff that's like 50% off. Yes. So when I shop the grocery store, um, that usually is what happens is we base our, uh, we basically base our list on, or our menu on what's on sale. What's the on the flyer or what's actually on 50% off? <laughs> or what's 50% off. So yeah, so we go with a plan and sometimes our plan get, hits left field and we, uh, we completely do something else, but mm -hmm. yep. that's the fun of it. So I'm going to add our peppers now, now that the uh, beef is, rendered is all bit. rendered. Um, it's a medium ground beef and some people may say, why, aren't, why not take the fat out of it? The reason why we're not taking the fat out is because we want to create a roux. And a roux is equal parts fat and flour, and that's going to thicken up, and that's what's going to make the sauce for this. So it's basically, we call it a, a one-pot beef stroganoff, but it's just a homemade hamburger helper, right? Yeah. Same idea. Same idea. There we go. Okay. That's all rendered off. You can add your mushrooms now. Ooh. Mushrooms are good for like a, a filler as well. Well, they are, and they mimic meat. They so, like we uh, like we were talking with our friend Rohit uh, uh, the last time uh, we met. Uh, it's basically it gives up that umami. It's a good mouthfeel. It mimics um, it mimics meat. Yeah. So if you you have a spaghetti sauce, or if you're making stuff like this, and you don't want to add your ground beef, or you can add less ground beef. So usually I put two pounds. But now I'm only going to use a pound of ground beef because I've got those mushrooms mm -hmm. filling that as well. So this time, Shane, if you want to add the seasoning. There we go. And I'm just going to sneak off for two seconds and grab the salt and pepper because I forgot it. Oops. All right. There we go. Okay. Nice. So you got that oregano in there? Yes. So yeah, we use the oregano, but you can use any kind of flavoring you want. You can use thyme. You can use... Uh, Basil, curry if you'd like to curry it up. It's basically it's a really simple recipe. We usually put um, steak spice. Well, yeah, we usually or chicken spice or that Montreal chicken, chicken spice, spice or, or steak Montreal spice. steak spice. 
in everything. Cause well, basically anything that we have in the cupboard, garlic yeah. powder. Mm. There we go. That smells good. It does. <laughs> so now that we got that all rendered out, I'm just going to add two or three tablespoons of flour. Mm -hmm. There we are. And then we'll kind of mix that together as well. And when you're incorporating your flour, you just want to make sure that it's fully incorporated. You don't want any floury lumps. Floury lumps, dough boys. Mm. Not the good dough boys that you make in a stew. Just the clumps. Nothing worse than biting into a nice sauce and getting a chunk of flour. Yeah. Gross. So there we go. <laughs> so not like so unconventionally like other pasta dishes, you would boil your pasta. And then you'd make your sauce and kind of incorporate them together. This, for the house, is the ease of dishes. Is all we're going to do is we're going to add uh, our... Today we've got bow tie pasta. You can use macaroni. You can use egg noodle if you want. Any, you, any favorite pasta, really. We're just going to toss that in. And give that a mix. And then we're going to cook everything all in one pot. So the pasta is going to absorb all the flavors of the beef and the peppers and the onions and uh, the starch that's going to come out of it as well is going to thicken our sauce. So it's, Let oh, you're going to pour it in? Sorry. My goodness. I know, like, like all the time. Take I'm trying over. to take over, but the boss is here to put me in my place. We'll be back with Easy Eats with Chef Eves right after this. Welcome back to Easy Eats with Chef Eve. I'm here with uh, with my lovely wife Shanna, and we're making a, a one pot uh, one beef pot wonder stroganoff. beef stroganoff. There you go. So it's not really a stroganoff because we've got mm. peppers in it. It's not a classic stroganoff, but uh, we'll we'll make do. So, like we were saying, we've got a family of five. We've got three kids. Uh -huh. So uh, two yeah. boys. Two boys. One cute, adorable girl. <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. Uh, th third time lucky, I guess. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> You can say that. Well, the boys will love it when yeah. they hear this, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, Dominic is our oldest, and he's, uh, he's 18. He's on his own now for the summer. We, uh, we, we, we shift him off to Ontario to work with my brother in a restaurant. So mm -hmm. we're a family of cooks, and we figured that uh, everyone should... Get him uh, started. Get him started, that's right. And our bills have gone down when he's gone because we well, don't eat nearly as much food. Well, we don't, exactly. So that's, that's another thing is a teenager will kind of eat up, and now we've got an up and coming. He, mm. Our middle guy, Seb, who is the, uh, the namesake of our ice cream business. Yes, big Seb. Um, exactly. We wanted to have something for kind of all of the kids to kind of be implicated in and have fun with. So mm. we, uh, Rigby was busy with her dancing and her gymnastics, and she was super busy. Dominic had his football and his cadets. And Seb has an interest in cooking as much as he doesn't want to admit it. <laughs> he does. Yep. So we thought we'd kind of nurture that and have, uh, and with the pandemic, we decided to open up the ice cream shop and call it Big Seb's because that's his nickname. Yep. So. And it sounds better than Big Eve. Well, Big Eve, yeah, exactly. <laughs> or Big Shan, which or is Big not, Shan, no, not no, what exactly. I want to be. Or Big Rig. Yeah. She'll hate that. Well, yeah. she did want that at first. She did, right. didn't she? But yeah, no, the ice cream truck is kind of evolved uh, since we've been doing it, like we said, we started off in our in our driveway in our driveway in Gary, and uh, it went really, really well. And then the things lifted a little bit, and people were able to we move go farther around. away. So it didn't get busy, but we still like doing it. So we started uh, going to different markets. So we mm -hmm. started out in Gage Town and sold really, really well. And then uh, the North Side uh, heard about us and wanted us to be part of it. So we started doing it there, and then we figured we'd get mobile, eh? And mm -hmm. so we got a new truck. We're going to put our stuff in it this year and hopefully so be able to move around a little easier than with just a cooler. <laughs> That's right. So we've got, the, we've got the Sevmobile. So the Sevmobile is going to be equipped with uh, a cooler right in the back. We'll be mm -hmm. scooping ice cream. We'll be making uh, our sandwiches, mm -hmm. which is a beautiful oatmeal and butterscotch salted caramel chip cookie. Yes. Again, with Sussex ice cream in between. It's um, delicious. And then, yeah. So it'll be just be a tent with a snowball behind us. <laughs> and... Uh, <laughs> Or the, or the Sevmobile. We the haven't Sevmobile. decided on the yeah. name or not yet. But yeah, no, a family of five can be expensive, and that's why we're kind of starting this side hustle, mm -hmm. too, is, you know, we've got to feed all these kids. and uh, They don't want to take a break from eating. No, they don't. And we have a range. We've got our 18-year-old, we have our 14-year-old, and then we have our 8-year-old. Um, 
we spaced them up because we're both cooks. So I called it a doorway romance is what we really, really <laughs> have. <laughs> we just didn't have time to, uh, we, well, we didn't have time to hang out because we were so no, busy. that's right. And being busy, we wanted to make meals like this that we can make ahead of time and get going. So a lot of times what we'll do is we'll get a lot of frozen pizzas. Um, yeah. That's uh, that's one thing. But We make a lot of pasta. But we do make a lot of pasta. Uh, we make a lot of casseroles if we can. Um, we... Uh, yeah, we try to get things that are quick and easy to make, or if we do make a head, we'll make enough to kind of make some for lunch for the next day, or kind of get enough to make two or three meals out of. Um, and us being lucky enough to be chefs, we can make a big pot of chili, and then we'll have chili one day, and then the mm -hmm. next day we'll have nachos with yeah. chili on top, and then we'll have The real burritos. problem is wanting to cook when you get home. That is, you know what, we should address that. That <laughs> is, is if you're at home all day and you're cooking. Or if you're at work all day and, and you're cooking. And you're cooking, yeah. And you, you don't want to come home and cook. No, you don't. You really, really don't. I mean, it's better now that I'm working here at the Greenwood mm -hmm. Village because it's not as driving as it used to be. Yeah. But uh, we're both line cooks at heart. And, you know, when you're working 14-hour days doing dishes in the hot kitchen, like Shanna said, you're right. The last thing you want to do is cook. So all we want to do is open up the door of the fridge and toss something in the microwave yeah. or saw something in the pot. So and plus something that someone else makes always tastes better. It does. It absolutely does. So all we're going to do here is you just bring everything to a boil and then as soon as the uh, pasta is tender and the sauce will thicken up, um, it'll, it'll be great to go. Mm -hmm. It's looking good. So what else, what, what other combinations have we put in here to give people a, an idea? We've done chicken and uh, tomatoes, kind of like a Florentine mm -hmm. with, uh, with spinach. We use a lot of sausage. We do use a lot of sausage. The sausage is another nice cheap meat that mm -hmm. you can use. Uh, you can use it as the sausage itself. You can take it right out of the casing and Chop use that up. as a ground beef. Yeah. So it's a pre-seasoned meat. There's um, also a lot of make this sauce and we would make the noodles separate because the kids are so picky. <laughs> well, yeah, the kids are so picky. So yeah, this is when we're doing it really quick, but yeah, we do. We make the sauce and then we make the noodles separate that way that if someone doesn't like what's in it, then they can yeah. just have the noodles on their own. Because yeah, the oldest doesn't like red, red, doesn't like peppers. Yes. The middle one loves peppers, but doesn't like onions. And the little one won't eat cooked carrots. Or, well, anything in here except mushrooms. I think she likes mushrooms. Well, that's <laughs> it. So usually when we make this at home, it's usually just uh, ground beef yeah. and Brussels sprouts or oh, peas. we love Brussels sprouts. Yeah, we do love Brussels sprouts at home. Mm -hmm. But you got to cook them right. <laughs> you do have to oh cook them God. right. Well, how do you cook them, Shanna? You put them on a tray yeah. with butter and bacon. And you cook them in the oven forever. I like them a lot more cooked than you do. Well, that's it. And I like them crispy, and she likes hers. I like them crispy, but anyway, I like them cooked. And cheese, Parmesan cheese. And Parmesan cheese, exactly. And then when we do have leftovers, then they go great in something like this. Mm -hmm. And again, this is what this is, is it's just a, a stewed pot of leftovers. Kind of like you could do it with rice and chicken, yeah. like we did with Rohit. But this is just kind of another vision, uh, version of what we, what we did. It's like stone soup. Like stone soup, exactly. So... For those who don't know about stone soup, can you uh, <laughs> can you let everyone it's, know? It, it, well, stone soup is the story of the the person who didn't have anything and just at, everyone just brought a couple of things. Well, anyone exactly. who wanted to eat it would bring something and put it in. So they called it stone soup because it started with just a stone in the soup. That's right. So a gentleman would walk around the uh, from village to village with a big pot mm. and a, and a stone. And he would get there, he'd build a fire, he'd put the pot on, he'd put a stone in the bottom of the and pot. And they'd say, what are you making? And he'd fill it up with water. Yeah, exactly. And he'd say, I'm making stone soup. And now, oh, it needs a little bit of this. And then someone would put that in. That's right. I need a little bit of carrot to make this tasty. And if you put a little bit of carrot in, I'll let you have some of my soup. And so on and so forth mm -hmm. until he had a huge pot of soup that he would feed the community with. Kind of like we're doing here at the Greener Village. Yeah. And then, uh, and then, uh, go, fr and then go from there. And then he, and after he was done, he'd eat his fill, he'd take his pot and his rock, and he'd go on to the next town. Yeah. So yeah, just put whatever you have in it. And whatever it you like. should make it nice. So at this point right here, everything is sort of firming up. We've got another 
minute or so on the noodles. Mm -hmm. But what we're going to do now is we're just going to, uh, what they say, kind of mount the sauce or kind of cream the sauce out. So you can grab some sour cream if you have it. If you have cream cheese, that works out really, really well. Um, if you have uh, yogurt, uh, plain yogurt if you can. I'm just going to turn this down now Ooh. to keep it from popping. And this one is a oat-based vegan Greek yogurt. Well, exactly. You use what you have in the cupboard. So grab a spoon right there, Shanna. And we're going to put a couple dollops in there. So probably, I would say, give me about a half a cup. Mm. Now, you can omit this all together, too, guys. Yeah. Give me one more scoop in there. Just a couple. We'll be right back with Easy Eats with Chef V. Welcome back to Easy Eats. Uh, again, I'm here with uh, my lovely wife, Shanna, and we're making a, a, a one-pot meal, a one-pot beef stroganoff or a one-pot... Uh, Hamburger helper? Or a Wonder Pot, I guess. Wonder yeah. Pot, yeah. So I think it's pretty much where we want it to be right now, and as you can see, um, what it does is you're going you're to get a lot of steam off your pot, so it's a best bet to not cover it when you're making this mm -hmm. because you want all that lovely stuff, to all that water to evaporate and all the flavor to stay in the pot, yeah. and then everything will get nice and thick. If you keep it covered, then it'll be a lot soupier. Mm -hmm. But essentially, here we go. We've got a nice, creamy yeah, looks good. pasta that we can just, oh, we'll just serve up right here. simple it's easy and yeah. again and this is something you could just make without the noodles and then put on rice put Pu on potato mm. put on rice put on potato well that's exactly it you can switch up the starches um, mm -hmm. and, and do that or we can also garnish Ooh, yes. here with a little bit of Parmesan over the top mm -hmm. you don't have to get fancy I mean garnishing is an option but uh, that th this is uh, we use uh, parmesan as a seasoning yeah. at the house more than anything else. Cheese and everything. Cheese in everything if we can. So there we go. It's a one pot meal that can definitely translate into different things. Like mm -hmm. it does have a different variations. Once you follow, I always suggest you follow the recipe the first time, and then and then, you mess, around with and then mess around with it afterwards. Yeah. Exactly. So that's pretty much it. Thank you so much, Shanna, for joining me today. I know that uh, I can be a pain sometimes, and you're sometimes. doing this, <laughs> and you're doing this because you love me, and I appreciate it greatly. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, this is great. The kids love it, and if there is leftovers, it is fantastic. The next day, this is a great thing to bring home, mm -hmm. bring back, uh, or bring to work for lunch. lunch. Shanna, thank you so much for joining me um, uh, with this one pot dish. Um, and thank you guys for joining me at, with Easy Eats with Chef Eve. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next time. <laughs>